Hello, the students, and welcome back to the Backyard Orchard Citrus course. Now, this next group of modules are on some common citrus diseases that you may see or encounter. Now, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Raj Singh, our state extension plant pathologist, for putting together these slide presentations for us. And so you know that the information is going to be really good and really accurate. And the first two modules talk about two very important diseases. These two diseases are probably the most prominent, the ones that are most threatening to the citrus industry in Louisiana, Florida, even in Texas and California. So these are two very important diseases, so it's good for you as homeowners and your backyard orchard to be able to recognize these because one way of controlling these is getting rid of diseased plants. So pay attention to these next two modules and you're going to learn about these two diseases. The first one we're going to talk about is citrus canker. The citrus canker is a bacterial disease and the bacterium is Xanthomonas axonophilus citri. And it was first detected in Florida in 1910. And as you'll see through this slide of the history of citrus canker, it was detected and then in 1914 the disease spread and they even went through destroying a lot of citrus trees to try to get rid of citrus canker. And it looked like they had gotten rid of it and then again citrus canker was last seen in 1940 in Louisiana and then suddenly 70 years later citrus canker shows up. It was detected in June 2013. And to this day, citrus canker has been detected in these parishes in Louisiana. East Baton Rouge, Jefferson, Lafourche, Livingston, Orleans, Plaquemine, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. James, St. John, and St. Martin parishes. That's like almost all the citrus growing areas in Louisiana. And all citrus varieties and hybrids are susceptible to citrus canker, though to varying degrees. Some are much more susceptible to citrus canker than others. And citrus canker is not affected by insects or any other organisms. And the, the citrus leaf miner, a lot of times you'll see the disease on the plants and you'll see it near where the citrus leaf miner mines are. And they aren't spreading citrus canker, but what they are doing are creating wounds in the plant and in its leaves, which is where then the bacterium comes in. And this is a map of Louisiana showing you where citrus canker has been uh, found. And this is the area where most of the citrus is grown, and this is also the area where the citrus canker has been detected. And the symptoms of citrus canker are, you're going to see it on the leaves, on the fruit, and on the stems. And it looks like tiny raised blisters, and they expand and they'll turn tan or brown as the disease develops. And the lesions from citrus canker are going to be on both sides of the leaves. That's important for you to know because there are some diseases that look similar to citrus canker but are different. And one of the big uh, symptoms of citrus canker is that the lesions are on both sides of the leaves. And they'll have water-soaked margins and a yellow halo around them. And these lesions will form quirky crater-like uh, lesions on the fruits, they'll get corky on the leaves and, and corky on the, the stems as well. Uh, the fruit lesions also have the water soaked margins surrounded by the yellow halo. And now similar to these similar lesions on the leaf twigs and leaf petioles, um, those water soaked margins may be much smaller and on uh, the twigs and the leaf petioles, now not on the leaves, but on the twigs and the leaf petioles, that yellow halo will be absent. But the yellow halo will definitely be there on the leaves and you know, you'll see it on the fruit as well. Now as the disease gets stronger and intensifies, uh, you'll actually start to get defoliation and twig dieback. And the severely blemished fruit will drop prematurely. Now here's the next few slides with some pictures of what citrus canker looks like. Here you can see on the upper surface of the leaf, and you can see lower surface. Uh, these are the raised corky lesions. Uh, these are the water soaked margins around those lesions. And of course, then you see the yellow halo. So you have the, the corky raised lesion, the water soaked area, and then the yellow halo. And you'll see uh, these are severely infected leaves. You'll see on the upper surface and on the lower surface. 
And this is what the symptoms look like on fruit. This is one that uh, on sweet orange where it is slightly infected. You can see the spots, the pustules here of, uh, that will ooze bacteria from them. And then this is a severely infected Meyer lemon fruit. And this is where uh, many infection sites occur and they've all coalesced into one nasty canker looking. And on the, the leaf petiole, you'll see you still have that raised corky lesion, uh, but you don't have the yellow halo around it. Same on the stem, you've got the raised corky lesion on the stem. Here's a little bit of the water soaked margin around that lesion, but you aren't getting the yellow halo. So, as you can see, citrus canker infects every part of the above ground portions of uh, a citrus tree. And here's what we're talking about with the leaf mine. Um, you see these lesions are a high concentration of lesions along here. And these are your leaf miner trails. And here you can see citrus canker lesions popping up everywhere along those trails. And what's actually happening, the citrus leaf miner is not transmitting the bacteria as it goes through, but as it tunnels through, it's damaging the leaf. And that damage or injury to the leaf is an opening for the bacteria to enter. And so that's why it looks like the leaf miner is transmitting the disease, but actually all it's doing is making a long trail of wounds for the caker bacterium to infect. Now the pathogen itself, it prefers temperatures anywhere from the range of 68 to 86 degrees. And that's a good portion of the year around here in Louisiana. Southern Louisiana, anyway. Uh, but it is acting over a much wider temperature range. So in Southern Louisiana with mild winters, you'll have the bacterium active year round. Once a tree gets infected, about 10 days, two weeks later, you'll start to see those lesions appear. And that's because it takes that long for the bacterium to get in there, start to multiply to the point where the lesion is large enough for us to see it with our naked eye. And these natural infections, they require free water on the leaf surface so that the bacterium has, stays moist, doesn't dry out, and has a way to enter through the stomates or the wounds. So this is another reason when we talked about irrigating your trees or irrigating your plants in general. When you do irrigation, you don't want to be spraying the entire plant. You want to put the water where the plant wants it, in the soil, at the root system. And by getting the plant wet, what you're doing is just making it easier for disease organisms to get into the plant and cause infection. And that's the case here with the citrus canker bacterium. With that free water on the leaf surface, from rain or from irrigation or even from dew, then it has a chance to enter the wounds or through the stomates, uh, natural openings on the leaves and stems. And the bacteria can survive in those old cankers for a long time. So leaf litter and other plant litter from the, an infected citrus tree has live living bacteria on those cankers laying on the ground. And so if you see any uh, of this, that's one of the reasons you want to always be getting rid of the leaf litter under your tree. Uh, even if you don't see citrus canker, because if there are small lesions that you haven't seen yet, they could be providing a source of infection for your tree later on. And under these wet, warm environmental conditions, those uh, cankers will exude bacteria. And through the wind, uh, through splattering of rain, even driving by with a lawnmower, if you drive by mowing the grass under a citrus canker infected citrus tree and it brushes your shoulder and then you go on and continue mowing your lawn and drive under a non-infected tree, you can transmit that bacteria. So there's lots of ways it can be transmitted. Uh, all these are mechanical methods of transmission. Uh, like I said, through um, rain, splashing, uh, splashing rain, uh, wind, uh, with your lawnmowers, landscaping equipment, even just you know walking by and, and touching the tree with your hands or getting it on your clothing. You can spread citrus canker that way. And in general, the long distance dispersal of the canker, it's usually attributed to um, events like the hurricanes that we have normally down here. Uh, 
uh, and every year, and tornadoes, things like that that could actually pick up the bacterium or even infected leaf material and carry it for long distances. That's the normal, natural way of spreading a canker for long distances. Uh, that can be confused with the greasy leaf spot, and the greasy leaf spot is a fungal disease. And you can see, um, this is a greasy leaf spot. And you aren't getting those corky lesions that you normally would get with, um, with citrus canker. Uh, you are getting uh, what looks like greasy spots on the leaf. That, that's the common name, greasy leaf spot. Uh, citrus canker is a bacterial disease. Greasy leaf spot is a fungal disease. And they can be easily confused. And so if you think you have citrus canker, contacting your local ex county extension agent, um, we can come out, they can come out and do a closer inspection of your tree and tell you whether you have citrus canker or greasy leaf spot. And the sad thing about citrus canker is there's no cure for it. Once your tree uh, gets it, even removing all the infected uh, plant material is not going to keep your, get it completely off your tree. Now, citrus canker is a bacterial disease. It's a um, surface disease only. It doesn't go systemic. By that, I mean it doesn't get inside the plant and spread through uh, the phloem or the xylem. It's only on the surface. But because it is so infective and so easily dispersed, uh, once your tree gets it, it's more or less got it forever. You're not going to be able to get rid of it. Now, uh, copper fungicides are effective against uh, suppressing the disease because copper kills uh, the bacterium and they can suppress the canker. And with uninfected trees, uh, the schedule spray uh, program using copper fungicides will help to protect the tree from citrus canker infection. However, they're not going to cure it. And um, once your tree got it, the best thing is to, to get rid of the tree. It's severely infected. Now, if you do use copper fungicides, you don't want to spray them during the bloom period. You want to avoid that. Um, copper, uh, it does come under the classification of uh, organic control method. So you can use copper fungicides if you're trying to grow everything organically. On the, the label will tell you a lot of this information that we have here, but it's really important that you don't mix your copper spray with any types of liquid fun fertilizers because that's going to cause a lot, some of the materials to precipitate out. And so you think you're putting something on and you're not because it's been precipitated out. And that can also be a problem if the uh, if you have a, your water pH is too low, the copper will actually hurt the tree. It has a phytotoxic effect if the pH of the water when you're applying it is too low. And so you want to avoid using very low pH water when you're doing your mixing. And precautions uh, to help control and prevent the spread of citrus canker. And don't move any of the infected materials out of the state. Really, if you have an infection, an infected tree, you don't really want to be moving it even from your house to your neighbor's house. Because if your neighbor doesn't have it, what you're going to do is spread it. Uh, buying certified disease-free plants is the best approach to starting disease-free. And if you do that, you can start with certified disease-free plants and then using your cup of protectants, you can keep the tree going for quite a long time without becoming infected. And if you think you have citrus canker, like I said, go ahead and contact your um, extension agents, uh, call and contact the, the USDA. This is the local number for the USDA. And, and they will tell you what, they, what you need to do. And sometimes they even have programs where they'll come out and remove the trees for you uh, to get rid of them because they really do want to stop uh, and as much as we can the spread of citrus canker because if it gets into an orchard, essentially that orchard becomes useless and will be destroyed. And so with that, now you know about citrus canker, and with the next module, you're going to learn about the other really bad disease that we want to be watching out for and doing our best.
to get under control.